delicious sayas. Today, we've prepared small dried fish used for soup stock and dry roasting to check for microplastics in the seafood we consume. The method to find microplastics is straightforward. Simply examine the contents of their digestive tracts. Let's begin with anchovies, which are relatively large, aren't they? First, we blanch the dried anchovies in hot water. Next, once the anchovy is rehydrated, we remove the muscles and separate the internal organs. Then we locate the stomach among these organs. Ta-da! Here is the anchovy's stomach. We place it on a glass slide, cut it open, add a few drops of distilled water, and scrape out the contents, leaving just the stomach, ready for observation of what the anchovy ingested before it died. The dotted gizzard shad is treated similarly, soaked in water, its stomach located and emptied. Now, let's examine the contents of the stomachs of both the anchovy and the dotted gizzard shad under a microscope. Upon closer inspection, we can see a variety of substances. Besides reddish zooplankton, there are carcasses of various small creatures. We also found numerous characteristic items. To identify microplastics among these, we consulted research materials and learned that microplastics can appear as strings, balls, and vinyl, along with small plastic pieces. We searched the materials that seemed like microplastics, and here they are. See this glittering object? These are presumed to be microplastics, appearing in various forms. There were more substances, likely to be microplastics than expected. While some might not be microplastics, the likelihood they are plastic is quite high. This is because microplastics are commonly found in many marine organisms in the ocean. Microplastics can enter our oceans and rivers, bypassing sewage treatment filters, or they can form from the breakdown of plastic debris in the ocean. In fact, microplastics are frequently found in the digestive tracts of marine organisms and shellfish that filter seawater, on seaweed surfaces, and even in the salt we use. The presence of microplastics in nearly all living organisms, including humans, is concerning because they accumulate up the food chain. As a result, modern humans are estimated to ingest the equivalent of one credit card of plastic every week. Once inside the body, microplastics can travel through blood vessels and have even been found in the breast milk of nursing mothers. Shocking, isn't it? What effect does microplastic have on our bodies? It's concerning, though not yet fully understood. However, this doesn't mean microplastics are harmless. Science relies on solid experimental results and evidence. Just as it took decades to link cigarettes to cancer, establishing a clear connection with microplastics is ongoing. Though it's too early to state definitively, animal studies suggest microplastics can cause digestive disorders, disrupt the endocrine system, and lead to reproductive issues, like infertility and miscarriages. They can also weaken the immune system. Scary, right? Currently, over 400 million tons of plastic are produced globally each year, but the recycling rate is low, with most either buried, incinerated, or discharged into the ocean. Thankfully, countries worldwide are recognizing this issue and drafting various international agreements. A meeting will be held to finalize the United Nations Convention on the Prevention of Plastic Waste Pollution. I hope you will follow it with interest. Tackling plastic pollution is a massive challenge that requires collective action from nations and corporations, but individual efforts to reduce plastic use are also crucial. I'm making small personal efforts to cut down on plastic use, even though it's not always easy. Isn't it great that we can improve the future with just a bit of individual effort? We've put a lot of work into this video, hoping it will help foster a better future. 
This is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science, where science unveils the mysterious.